there is no hopeless area in your life. There is no area of your life that is beyond redemption. God chose us and, and said, I have set my gaze on you, daughter. Let's go into the word for this morning. See, every time, every week, I gave you a positive example of rest and a negative example of rest. Do you remember that? Beginning from Samson, Delilah, to even last week, I gave you a, a negative example of rest where the disciples were sleeping, but their spirit was inactive. And yet, there was a Jacob who was sleeping, but his spirit was active and that's why he was able to receive from God even though he was physically resting so today again I'll begin with the negative example okay let's go to the story of Jonah okay the book of Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1 the Bible says the Lord gave this message to Jonah the son of Amittai there was a message that came to this man he was a prophetic guy he was somebody sent by the Lord to a nation. And for that person to be sent into a nation, there had to be a, a message that would come from God's heart to his heart. Every time God wants to move a nation, every time God wants to shift a season, every time God wants to bring in a transition, he will always send a message. He will always send a word. And then he will wait and watch how we respond to that word. And based on our ability to understand what God is saying, based on our ability to respond to what God is showing us, we will either progress to the next level or we will be stuck in the current level. Okay? This is what the Bible says. The word to Jonah was this, verse 2. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. So the Lord is asking Jonah to get up. Which means he was in a season of rest. He was sitting down. He was not doing anything. And that is when God is saying, now you need to become active. You need to get up and you need to travel. You need to go somewhere. You need to go and you need to find this great city of Nineveh. And this is what you should do. Announce my judgment against it. Because I have known I have seen how wicked its people are. So prophet Jonah, he gets a word from the Lord. And the word is that he needs to announce what? Judgment. Now the thing with Jonah is that this guy, he has walked with God. He knows the heart of God. He knows the mind of God. He is a prophet, right? Yeah, come on, talk to me. He's a prophet. And something about being a prophet is that Prophets know the heart of God, not just the mind of God. See, anybody can know the mind of God. Anybody that has uh, the, the ability to just press in and get to know what is in God's mind, anybody can do that. Let me give you an example from the Old Testament. There was Lot and there was Abraham, right? Both of them got to know the mind of God. The mind of God was to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Both Lot and Abraham got to know the mind of God. But only Abraham could tap into the heart of God. Because Abraham said, if it is possible, will you spare this city for 50 righteous people? That is the difference between a prophet and just a righteous Lot. God is not looking for good, righteous, holy people in the church today. God is looking for prophetic group of people in this church that not just have information but they know what is in the heart of God concerning that information see when God tells you I'm going to scorch Sodom and Gomorrah you're not to say oh wow that's amazing clap I, I was looking forward to it but a prophet would just stand in the gap a prophet would say what can I do to stop this now the thing with Jonah is that Jonah he knew the mind of God and he knew the 
heart of God. If it was only the mind of God, he would have been very happy. He would have gone and preached and said, hey, you guys, judgment's coming. You're going to be scorched. Same thing that happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, it's going to happen to you. But later on, you understand in chapter 4, you see that Jonah knew that God is going to be merciful. Have you read the book of Jonah? Please don't look at me like, what story are you talking about? Jonah is in the Old Testament, in the, one of the minor prophets. You should read this story. Most of us can relate to his story. Most of us disobedient guys can relate to this story. And it says, Jonah, he understood, he knew ahead of time that God is going to be merciful to this nation. So Jonah did not just have access to the information. He also understood the heart of God. So when God is saying, go and announce judgment, he knows, I'll go, I'll preach, and it will not happen. You know, the exact opposite of what I preached is what will happen. So it doesn't make sense for me to obey God. Because if I obey God, then what is in God's heart will be fulfilled. And that is the same understanding of God's heart that made him disobey God. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us, it's very easy for us to say, oh, this guy didn't know the heart of God. It's because he knew the heart of God that he didn't go. Okay? So the Bible says, the word came to Jonah saying, go and announce my judgment against this people group. Now this people group, they were not Israelites. They were not Jews. They had been hurting the Jews. They've been hurting the people of God. And in every way, they deserved the judgment that was coming to them. And Jonah believed it. God believed it too. And yet, something was about to change for that nation. Verse 3, the Bible says, But Jonah, he got up and went in the opposite direction. Now you understand why I told you that many of us can relate to this. Yeah. It says, God told him to do certain things. And he did the exact opposite of what God told him to do. God told him to avoid a particular community. He did the exact opposite. God told him to go to a particular community. He did the exact opposite. It says, Jonah, he got up. He did break his rest. But he went in the exact opposite direction. But what was his purpose? To... How many of us are like really dumb enough to try this? Come on, I want to see your hands. If you, if you ever tried to get away from God's will for your life, I'll tell you, I've been there. I've done that. All of us, we've, we've somewhere or the other, we have tried to get away from God's will for our lives. Thinking that if only I, I don't, uh, you know, respond back for the next five prophecies, this may stop coming. If only I stop going to church for the, this season, you know, I think that this feeling will go away. If only I will just shut myself up, I get busy in doing something else, then, you know, this will, this will just somehow become, you know, redundant. It says, Jonah, he got up and he went in the exact opposite direction. And the reason he did was to get away from the Lord. So he went down to the port of Joppa, where the Bible says he found a ship and this ship was not leaving to Nineveh. This ship was leaving to Tarshish. Then he brought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. So this was his hope, this was his prayer, this was his drive, this was his desire that he wants to somehow escape from what God has in store for him. Okay, he's not doing this to rebel against God. He's doing this because he knows the heart of God. He knows the mind of God. And he knows the power of his prophecy. He knows that when I go and release this word to them, this nation will turn around. Jonah believed in his message. Jonah believed in the anointing that he carried. Because of which... He said, no, 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 I, I, I don't want that. God wants this, but I don't want it. Yeah. And because of which the Bible says he tried escaping, skipping, moving away from the plans of God for his life. 
and this is the danger whenever we try to skip what process god wants to allow in our lives whenever we skip the assignments that god has given us we mess up our seasons because we may be in a season of rest but we may be we may end up working we may be in a season of work and we will end up resting yeah we'll read about this okay it says so he happily got onto this ship and he's sailing towards tarshish verse 4 but the lord he heard a powerful wind over the sea what did it do it caused a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart this is a a crazy experience it's one thing to be in a road accident because you know if you have a road accident there are people to help you there are you know there are things to do but if you have an accident in the ship or in the middle of nowhere that is you know we've all seen movies yeah yeah come on talk to me if you're in the middle of nowhere this is a very very dangerous place the bible says this storm it threatened to break the ship apart this is the ship that jonah has put his refuge in this is the ship that is using to run away from god this is the ship that he is hoping will help him will you know support him will stand by him so that he can escape the plan of god for his life and that ship was in the danger of breaking apart because of jonah's decision so sometimes you may be wondering why why is it that you know my business is going through such a turmoil you need to you know search for any jonas in your business yeah if you if you if your church is going through a lot of attacks look for a jona in your church if your if 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 your marriage is going through turmoils ups and downs find a jona find a spot find someone something that is trying to escape the will of god escape the plans of god the bible says that the 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 lord heard great wind and waves it's not the enemy god himself is coming to stop this journey and the bible says this there was great threatening voices against the ship and the ship was about to break apart verse 5 it says fearing for their lives the desperate sailors what did they do they began to shout out to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard so that they can lighten the ship you know when we are in danger is when our real self manifests these guys they were very civilized people till they reach the storm till they reach the point where the ship could break apart and all of a sudden they began to scream they began to shout and in that moment of shouting their greatest fears came through you know some of uh, the people that have like denied the existence of god just at the moment of their death they will call on to god in that moment of desperation they would call on to the same god that they believed didn't even exist why is that because it's in moments when your ship is breaking apart that you you're desperate these sailors they were so desperate they began to shout they began to scream there was only one guy who didn't do this <laughs> what does that tell us about this guy it was that he was not desperate like the other sailors were he knew who he was he knew who his god was in spite of knowing this is a punishment from god jonah was at peace check this out in spite of knowing this is coming from god jonah had the ability read the next verse okay it says but all this time jonah was sound asleep down in the hold all this time 
when the entire crew is you know throwing off their food their supplies their you know everything they have saved up for their entire life they're throwing it overboard and they're shouting and screaming and they're calling out to all the gods that they know every name they know they are doing that and here is a man of god who serves the god of heaven and the earth he says you know it's okay let me go take a nap i i i know that this is not going to help how many of you know that in some problems your prayers is not what going to what's going to help in fact you would see this in this same example the captain comes to him and says what should i do will you pray shall we do something should we he said nothing prayer is not going to help only actions are going to help you have to throw me overboard so there are some issues where you shouting out loud is not going to help you see one of the things in the bible you would see how this blind man he begins to shout out to jesus saying jesus son of david have mercy on me and guess what jesus ignored it because this was a shout that was declared out of fear and not out of faith it was not a shout out of you know joy because the bible says shout for joy to the lord but this guy he was shouting out of fear that if jesus passes by then i will not get it i will not get the healing this is my one time uh, you know opportunity to reach the heart of jesus jesus did not stop because this guy shouted do you know why jesus stopped jesus stopped because people started shutting him down and jesus doesn't like that jesus doesn't like anybody else hurting you oppressing you pulling you down so he will stop not necessarily for your lack of unbelief but he will stop when you are experiencing injustice at the hands of people yeah so when people mistreat you just chill and relax because your help is on the way when when people look down on you just you know wait and watch how the eyes of god will catch you i'm telling you without a shadow of doubt every time this has been my personal experience every time that i've ended up in a battle in any of my relationships with people around me a prophet would call up out of nowhere saying hey god is on your side god is seeing what you're going through and this is what i'm going to do in so many days things are going to shift and i'm telling you this is a god who sees us he is el roi he knows it when we are hurting and especially when somebody else is hurting us he is not somebody that we have to always just try so hard to get his attention jonah knew that jonah understood that even though this is god who is doing this you know i i don't think prayer is going to help i don't think shouting is going to help i'll do what i'm best at doing i'm best in resting even in times of turbulence even in times of chaos i'm going to rest and that's what he did let me ask you this if a disobedient jonah could rest in a season when god is going to try and fight him how much more can you and i rest when god has promised to be on our side how much more can we be at peace when god is saying hey don't worry but the problem is this the ship was filled with people who had a lot of fear so the captain the bible says in verse 6 he went down after him and he woke him up how can you sleep at a time like this he shouted this is not a time to rest this is a time to pray this is a time to fast this is a time to call out to your god how can you rest how can you sleep verse says it continues he, he's now he's teaching the man of god how to have a relationship with god okay he's saying can you please get up and pray to your god maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives but did jonah do it no he didn't do it it's like prayer is not going to help me today prayer is not going to help you guys today the only thing that is going to help is somebody who is not supposed to be on this ship has to get out of this ship 
So you do this, everything will get sorted. Just throw me out of this ship and the ship will be fine. Yeah, because Jonah loved these guys and didn't want these guys to drown along with him. He said, just get me off. See, this is the thing about Jonah. He, he had a revelation that he could rest even in the craziest seasons of life. He, he had a revelation of the goodness of God. He had a revelation of the love of God. He had a revelation of the mercy of God. He had a revelation of the plans of God for his life. And if we can catch that same revelation, then we will be able to rest. The only thing that stops us from resting when the enemy is trying to fight us is fear. These sailors, they were all driven by fear. They did not have faith. And that fear of what is going to happen in the next moment, the fear of how is my money going to come from? How is my marriage going to happen? How is my health going to work out? How is tomorrow going to look like? How is my church going to survive an attack like this? All those fears is what stops us from resting. You understand this fears which was manifesting in all these people, they went and woke up Jonah who was in sound sleep, the Bible says. So this morning, I want to expose this enemy of rest called fear. If we can target every fear this season and if we can just say, I am going to rest in the promises that God has for me. I'm going to listen more to the voice of God than to the voice of the enemy. I'm going to listen more to what God is speaking about me than what all the threatening voices that are speaking against me. I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to believe that. And even if, let's say, God is the one fighting me, I will still wait on him. Job said that in the scripture. He said, even if he will slay me, I will still wait on him. He had that kind of arrogant confidence that said, hey, it's okay. I can rest in God. I can rest in Him. At the, at the mats, I'll, I'll, I'll be eaten by a whale. At the mats, I'll smell like vomit. At the mats, I, I may die. But even if He would slay me, I'll still sleep. I will still rest. I will still not freak out like the rest of them. I'm not going to allow the fear in my community to take over my spirit. To hijack my mind. You know, fear, it comes in all shapes and sizes. Most of the things that we do is a manifestation of our fear. Fear is not just, you know, the expression you have when you watch a horror movie. Some of our wrong choices are a result of fear. Some of our, you know, decisions about finances. Some of the decisions about our work. Some of the decisions about our relationships. All of them are as a result of fear. The Bible says in the book of Romans, anything that is not born of faith is sin. It says, if you do anything that you believe is not right, you are sinning. So in other words, if, you, if you're not working in faith, if whatever actions you're making, it is not in faith but in fear, then that is not just not productive, that is sin according to scripture. Anything that is not of faith, anything that you do outside of your belief system, it is in fact a, a sin. So Jonah understood that and he said, I, I'm just going to be rested here, I'm just going to stay put here and I am going to not freak out like everybody else. And that is, the, that is what gave him the ability to rest. You know, somebody else slept through a storm. Jesus. Last week we were in the anchor group and one of the questions for discussion was compare Jesus and Jonah. You know? And we were all like, yeah, you know, we had some creative answers from our children. Both starts with J, both has five letter words. And <laughs> but here we have a story that Jonah, he slept through a storm because he didn't give in to the fear. And we know about Jesus. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 8 and verse 23. The Bible says, Then Jesus, after a whole day's ministry, teaching, healing, helping people, 
he got into the boat and he started across the lake with his disciples. So it was a journey that he intended to finish. Now, Jonah got into a journey which was outside God's will. And he experienced storms and turbulences there. Jesus got into a journey which was in God's will for his life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So just because you have turbulence doesn't mean you're outside of God's will. You may have turbulence outside God's will or inside God's will. Jonah was outside God's will and he got eaten up by a whale. Jesus was inside God's will and yet he was buried in the earth for three days, three nights, even though he was in the will of God. Jonah went into the belly of the whale for three days because he was outside the will of God. Jesus went into the belly of the earth even though he was right in the center of the will of God for his life. So turbulence or the lack of turbulence is not a sign that you're in the will of God or out of the will of God. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody that has spiritual intelligence will understand this and will activate the right principles because Job, he had not done anything wrong. He had not gone outside God's will for his life. If there was the slightest mishap, the Bible says, even for sins that were not known, he would sacrifice. So that just in case there is something that he has not covered, that will also get covered. And this was a man who went through a crazy turmoil in life. So the question really is not whether, hey, am I, what's wrong with me? What wrong did I do? Why is God allowing this in my life? The question is, how am I going to respond in this season of going through turbulence? I have the choice to do what everybody else is doing. Shout and scream and, and just like they call out to their gods, I will call out to my God and say, Jesus, please don't forget me. You would see the same thing happen to Jesus here. Okay, verse 24, suddenly it says, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves now breaking into the boat. You understand the same thing that happened to Jonah's ship where the ship was being threatened to break apart. Now the same thing is happening to the boat that Jesus is in. Now these waves, they were breaking into the boat. Now this boat can sink this boat is in the danger of drowning. The Bible says, the next line, read it out loud. But Jesus was asleep. So if Jesus has the grace to sleep through storms, you and I, we need to have the grace to rest in seasons of storms. Everything that Jesus had, everything that Jesus did is our inheritance. Amen. See, our role model is not Jonah. I'm not trying to say, do what Jonah did. Our role model is Jesus. Jonah did it in the wrong place at the wrong time for the wrong reason. But Jesus, he was in the will of God and yet the storms came. And the Bible says, Jesus, what he did was exactly what Jonah did. He slept through that entire storm. I'm just wondering, isn't it physically impossible to do something like that? Is, isn't it physically challenging to do something like that? Like, how many of you are light sleepers? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the slightest of change in the house, the slightest of, you know, noise, the slightest of movement in the house and you're like, man, uh, there is either Jesus is returning back or there is actually a thief in the night in my house. You know, <laughs> We wake up, we wake everybody up and we want to find an explanation. Jesus, the Bible says, he is in the middle of a storm where the waves are now crashing into the boat. There are threatening voices. There are, there are sounds that can be heard. How can you ignore all these sounds and sleep, Jesus? How can you ignore all this negativity around you and be at rest? How can you just ignore everything that the enemy is threatening to do to you? And in fact, instead of praying, forget about praying, you're going to the other, you're sleeping. 
I can understand if you're praying on your knees. But this is not even that. You are sleeping. You're resting. You're in a place where you're not bothered by this. How can you do this, Jesus? The next verse. Are you ready for what we would do? Verse 25, it says, the disciples. Look at your neighbor and say, is that you? You know how the disciples woke him? The same way that the sailors woke up Jonah. You remember how they were shouting out to their gods and they were shouting to Jonah? It says, the disciples went and woke him up. How? Come on, say it loudly. Shouting. Not saying Jesus, you know, let's have a conversation about this. I want some clarity about what you said in the morning that we will reach the other side of the shore. Nothing like you know, the disciples, they are shouting, saying, Lord, save us because we are going to... Foolish disciples, don't you know Jesus is also on this ship? If you drown, Jesus also drowns. Come on now. And has anybody ever seen a story where Jesus can drown? Anybody ever heard of a story where Jesus, where it was too, where there was a storm that was too difficult for Jesus to overcome. Come on church, talk to me. And here is the disciples, they are in the presence of Jesus. They are talking with Jesus. They have a revelation of who Jesus is. And now they are telling Jesus, Jesus, this is it. Our ministry is getting over. This is it. And, and they are convincing Jesus that we are going to drown. And their prayer to Jesus is not made out of faith. Their prayer to Jesus is made out of fear. That is why I, I tell people, when you are in fear, don't pray. Yeah. Because that, that prayer is counterproductive. When you are in fear, you worship. When you are in fear, you read your Bible. When you are, you know, hearing all these negative voices, you need to fill your head with another voice that will overlap, overpower the voices of the wind and the waves. When you're in fear is not when you pray. When you're in fear is when you sing all the more louder. When you sing to yourself, when you encourage yourself, when you, when you say, uh, just like David encouraged himself in the Lord, now I am going to encourage myself. I'm going to build myself up. I'm going to build my immunity to these fears that are surrounding me. The Bible says they, in the middle of fear, as an expression of their fear, as a manifestation of that fear, these guys prayed. So not all prayers are spiritual. Some prayers, they are just a manifestation of your fear. So if you're praying for one hour, that's a good thing. But I pray, I hope, that your prayer is a, is a revelation of the goodness of God. Not a revelation, not a manifestation of your fear. Okay, the Bible says when Jesus woke up, what did he respond? Wow, so good you guys. You prayed. I, I, I'm so glad you prayed. If you wouldn't have prayed, no, this boat would have surely sunk. Right, that's what Jesus said. Come on, read it for me. Verse 26. Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Why are you afraid? See, fear, the presence of fear is a sign that there is absence of faith. Faith and fear cannot go hand in hand. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not saying there is no faith, but the faith was very little. They still had faith that Jesus can help them. Yeah. Come on. That's why they, they tried waking Jesus up. They still believed that there is some solution that Jesus can come out from all of this. That he can bring through all of this. But the faith was very little. When the faith was little, the fear began to overpower. The fear began to have the last laugh. The fear began to take over their 
decision making capacity the fear began to take over their relationship with jesus the fear took over their uh, thought process their their bodies are perspiring all those things are a manifestation of that fear now now jesus says hey learn from me look at me look at what i was doing i was resting i was sleeping i was i was not afraid of what was happening here because i was not of little faith because i was not of somebody that is that doesn't believe the bible says then he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves and suddenly there was great calm so it is not the peace of my circumstances becoming the peace inside of me but the peace inside of me has to go out and become the peace in my circumstances are you able to see the picture here here is jesus who was sleeping and when he woke up with that peace with that rest with that place of understanding who he is and where this enemy is fighting from he spoke he rebuked the wind and the waves and the bible says all of a sudden there was a great calm the wind and the waves now went to sleep in the same rest that jesus was in that got transferred to the circumstances around him yeah that is what god wants us to do not that you will be provoked by your circumstances and you will begin to act in a certain way because people said this people did that no 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 it should be the other way your peace your grace your understanding your revelation needs to change your circumstances come on am i talking to a family of jesus believers a family of jesus followers a family that are disciples of jesus that are aiming to function like jesus here on the earth if yes then this is how we have to be that when we get up when we open our mouth in a storm we don't cry out to god when we are in a storm please don't do that we don't cry out to god when we are in a storm we look within ourselves we eradicate any fear that we have and then we speak to our storm yeah you you go to god when everything is sorted then you go to god give him thanks you know tell him lord this is what we did this is how we overcame this is how you gave us the grace to understand this because if my expression of prayer or my expression towards god is a result of my fear then that prayer is not going to work the bible says in verse 27 the disciples were amazed who is this man they asked even the wind and the waves obey him so this is my point if you can tackle this enemy of rest if you can tackle this concept of fear if you can grow in faith then your circumstances will obey you yeah you don't have to wait for an anointed man of god to come and lay hands and pray for you your circumstances you will have dominion over your circumstances you will have the final say as to where you will do what i hope your faith is increasing amen apostle paul he taught us in the book of philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 he says always be full of joy in the lord i say it again rejoice he is not saying that when you have a blessing then you be full of joy he's saying always be full of joy always this is a instruction given to you we turn this around to god and say god you fill me with joy no 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 no, no. the instruction is to you so that you manifest the joy that is already inside you see do you know that joy is a fruit of the holy spirit joy is not a fruit of your circumstances joy is a fruit of the holy spirit joy for those of you who rely too much on psychological help joy is not a fruit of your emotional or mental well being you understand what i'm saying joy is not a you know there are other things that can bring emotional and mental well being but i'm not talking about happiness i'm not talking about 
all those characteristics. I'm talking about joy. Joy is a result of the Holy Spirit's filling you. So if you cannot manifest joy, either you don't have the Holy Spirit or you, you've not tapped into the Holy Spirit who is in, in you. So what is it, church? What is it? Is it because we don't have the presence of God inside of us? Or is it because we don't believe what God has said in His Word? If it is something that you need to pray about, Apostle Paul would pray saying, okay, whenever you are in trouble, please pray for joy. No, he didn't say pray for joy. He said, now be full of joy. Manifest that joy. Let that joy that is already inside you, let it come forth. Let it come out. Let it, let it begin to take over your circumstances. The joy is already in you. It is not in your neighbor. It is not in your circumstances. It is not in your job. It is not in the blessing. No, no, no. The joy is in you. Yeah. If, you, if you're a parent, you're praying for your children and your children are cranky, they are not able to express joy, don't try to teach them joy. Let your joy manifest. Let your joy overflow. Let, let your joy take over the atmosphere in your house. This joy has to be unreasonable. That when people look at you, they, 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 they should be saying, this is not a time to be happy. This is, not, this is a time when you shout out to your gods. This is not a time to, to, to be rejoicing. Verse 5. Read it with me. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Because you need to remember that the Lord is. In other words, Paul is saying, when you're doing something, you have to consider what you're doing. You have to consider your circumstance. You have to consider the outcome of your actions. So don't be a victim of all the emotional and the mental battles you're facing. No, no, no. You consider, you sit down, you, you evaluate everything and do it. Do, let your choices be a result of your meditation on God's voice. Not your meditation on your threats. It says, that's why you need to be considerate. You need to be able to take a step back and evaluate yourself. The next verse, verse 6 says, don't worry about come on loudly church. One, one more time. Come on, say it like, you know, your spirit needs to get convinced about this, okay? Loudly, one more time. Don't anything. Come on, look at your neighbor. Tell them as well. Don't anything. If there is anything that is causing fear, that is causing doubt, that is causing concern this morning, we are tackling the enemy of this rest. And we are saying, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Once you've dealt with worry, then you can pray about everything. Yeah, everything. I mean, God is not going to be mad at the fact that you prayed about everything. You can pray about every single little thing. It says, tell God what you need. Not shout at Him. Not scream at Him. Not, not nag Him. Not strong arm Him. But tell Him. Like a friend would talk to a friend. Tell him. Bring your supplications before the Lord. Express your needs to the Lord. Without worry. Without fear. Without, you know, all these emotional complications that we give into. Okay? It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And then do what? And thank Him. For all that he has done. So whenever you respond with worship, especially when there, is, there has been a history of fear, especially when there has been a history of negative response to God, when you respond with worship, it says in that portion where Jesus calmed the wind and the waves, it says the disciples, they would go down to worship Jesus. In another story, you, you, this, the, when Jesus calmed the wind and the waves, the disciples, they began to worship Him. Because now they had a revelation, not just of this God, 
now they have a revelation of somebody who, who carries, the, who is the author of peace. Now this author of peace, he's able to translate the peace that is inside him to the peace that is around him. And if you believe in a God like that, and if you trust in a God like that, then you should be able to thank him for all that he has done. First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, Give thanks in everything. In everything. Not for everything, but in everything. You don't have to give thanks for an accident, but even in an accident. You get that? You're not saying, thank you Lord for this accident. No, no, no. You're saying, thank you. Even when there is an accident, even if there is a storm, you're saying, thank you Lord. Because I will rest. In your promises, my confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises, my confidence is your faithfulness. Read verse 7. It says, when you do this, then, everybody say then. then. Then you will experience. What? Answers to all your questions that you ask God. What is God's solution to everything that you prayed? See, what did Paul say? Pray about? The answer to that prayer is not now God is going to answer everything. Do you understand the correlation? Paul says... Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. And when you do this, what you get is peace inside of you. It says, then God's peace. Then you will experience God's peace. How many of you know that peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit? Which means it's not coming from heaven. It's a manifestation of what you already have inside you. It says, then you will begin to experience God's peace. And this is a peace which exceeds anything that we can understand. Which means your logic will not work in this level of peace. Your emotions will not work in this realm of peace. Your, your physical abilities may, may not work you know, in sync with this level of peace. This is a different kind of peace. It, it exceeds understanding. It says, when you do this, what you will experience is not a quick fix solution to all your problems or a quick fix answer to every question that you ask God. What you will experience is a peace that exceeds everything that you can understand. And then the next line. Are you ready for this? It says, this peace now will now God, your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Your heart, it is a sign of your emotional state. Your minds is a, is a sign of your rational state or your logical state. Okay, so let me rephrase what Apostle Paul is saying. This peace, it will guard your emotions and it will guard your thoughts. Do you understand what I'm saying? This peace will now protect your emotional well-being. This peace will now protect your mental well-being. Both. Where will this peace come from? From the Holy Spirit that He has already placed inside of you. The Holy Spirit, when you do these things, when you stop giving into fear, when you pray about everything, when you trust God for everything and when you worship Him in everything, it says this peace, it will manifest and this peace will now guard your emotions and this peace will now guard your thoughts, your mind. Come on, read it one more time. His peace will guard my, my. You say the word my. His peace will guard my heart and my mind as I live. One more time. His peace will guard my heart and my mind as I live in Christ Jesus. This is the rest that the Lord is calling us to. This is the rest. 
what stops your joy is fear what stops your peace is fear what stops your revelation of who god is is fear if there's one thing that we should be afraid of is that we may miss out on this peace <laughs> the writer of hebrews he says in hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So this is what we should do. We ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. He's like, don't fear about the ship going down. Don't fear about, you know, the enemy speaking all this. Fear that you may not experience what peace of God is like here on the earth. Come on church, if, if you're losing your peace, if you're losing your joy, that is worth fearing about. That, you have to fast and pray. You have to get a special counseling session that day. You have to go receive some help. You know, call for intercessors for prayer saying, I, I'm, I, I don't know what is wrong. I've lost my peace. I've lost my calm. I'm, I'm losing my cool. I'm not able to respond with joy i don't know how to do this i don't know where i have missed the mark paul says hey you need to tremble with fear because some of us might not make it might not be able to experience it not that we will not get it to make it to heaven we can we may still make it to heaven because of our relationship with jesus but here on this earth we may live like miserable people Shouting and screaming at God and people for everything. Some of us, we scream at people. Some of us, we scream at God. Some of us, we scream at both. God and people. The reason is fear. Uh, everything, the root of everything is fear. And Paul says, we need to tremble with fear because some of you might fail to experience it. Because the flip side is that verse 10 for all who have entered into God's rest. This is what has happened. They have rested from their labors just as God did after creating the world. So this is a rest which is a permanent rest. It began on the seventh day of creation. It didn't begin now. It began, began back then. This peace that I'm offering you this grace that I'm offering you, it, it is available. The Bible says the promise for rest, it still stands. It is still available. This is the season. Tap into it. If you overcome this enemy of rest right now, I'm telling you, nothing will be able to shake you. Nothing will be able to take away your confidence. Nothing will be able to take away your relationship with God. Nothing will be able to steal the blessings that God has given you. Because the Bible says, everybody that has entered into this rest, they have rested from their labors. So I bless you with this grace to rest from your labors. To rest from some of those prayers that you're praying in fear. To rest from some of those fears and concerns that you have. To rest from some of those anxiety that is taking over your life. I speak rest. This fear is our greatest enemy. Do you believe that? Come on, talk to me. So can we read out a psalm that speaks about enemies? And your enemy is not, you know, the person sitting next to you. Your enemy is fear. Okay, so if that is true, then I want you to read this psalm. I need you to declare this psalm as a judgment against the enemy, the spirit of fear. Are you ready? Come on, one, two, three, go. Oh Lord, I have so many fears. So many fears that are fighting against me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not afraid of people. I'm not afraid. But these fears that has the potential to not allow me to enter into the rest. No, I'm, there are so many of these fears that are now working against me. So many are saying, God will never rescue him. How many of you know that your fear has a voice? You need to understand what your fear is saying to you. Discern what your fear is trying to communicate to you. Narrow it down, you know, just 
catch that frequency. You need to know the exact sentence this fear is speaking into your ears. Because you need to say something else against that fear. You need to cancel that fear. You need to make a declaration that will change the state of your mind. Are you ready for David's declaration? Verse 3, come on, loudly. But you, O oh Lord, you are a shield around me. You are my glory and the one who holds my head high. The enemy says you will not rescue me, but I know who you are. I know that you are my shield and I know that you are the glory around me and you are the one who holds my head high. You are the lifter up of my head. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. If the enemy is saying something, what are you saying back to the enemy? So the Bible says, I have so many fears. So many are against me. So many are saying, God will not rescue me. But you, O Lord, you are a shield around me. You are my glory. And you are the one who holds my head high. <laughs> Verse 4, I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. See, this is a cry that is not out of fear. This is a cry that is out of revelation that you are my shield, you're my glory, you're the lifter up of my head. And because I cry out in faith, it says he answered me from his holy mountain. Verse 5, you ready for this? I lay down, I lay down, I lay down and I slept. Yet when I woke up, in safety because the Lord was watching over me. So please understand what the psalmist is saying. He is not saying that the enemies have disappeared. The enemies are still there. You remember what was verse 1? I'm surrounded by my enemies. So the fears, don't think that today when you walk out of this place, that voice will suddenly disappear. That feeling will suddenly go. No, no, no. The voice is still there. The enemy is still threatening you. That, you know, that messages are still coming from the bank. But now you, you are going with a different revelation. Now you are going with a revelation of who your God is. It says, because of that, because of this revelation that you are my shield, my glory, and the lifter of, of my head, because I have called out to you and you answered. What, how does God answer our prayers? I taught you from Philippians 4. He gives us peace. So when I pray, He fills me with peace. With that peace, what do I do? I lay down and I slept. In the presence of my enemies. Not in the absence of fears. Not in the absence of turbulence. Not in the absence of problems. No, no, no. In the presence of problems. I lay down and slept. Wow. And I woke up. Because the Lord was still watching over me. All through the night, all through the time that I was sleeping, the one who watches over Israel, he never sleeps. He never slumbers. I can rest in him. When I rest, I'm not resting outside of him. I'm resting on his lap because he's watching over me. You know, growing up, I used to enjoy falling sick because... Every time I would fall sick, my mom would sit by my bed and she would be awake the entire night praying for me, caring for me. And I used to enjoy that. You know, I, I thought that, you know, that's, that's like what every parents do. And, and this is something that I, I used to enjoy. I, I would go to sleep with my mom praying for me and I would wake up in the morning and she's still there. She's still praying. She's not slept the entire night. You know, and I'd be sleeping on her lap. I miss that now, you know. <laughs> but but this, is, this is who our God is to us. This is who our God is to us. It says, he, you can sleep confidently in your understanding and your revelation of who this God is. And when you wake up, you know that He was watching over you all through this time. Now when you wake up, now when you've gotten out of this rest, you're waking up with the peace that, that has 
that has become concrete in you. Now, like Jesus did, you can now rebuke your storms. Now you can let the peace that is inside you take over the storms that are surrounding you. Now you can make declarations that is going to bring calmness and peace in your environment. That is exactly what the psalmist does here. It says in verse 7, Now arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God, slap and shatter the teeth of the wicked. So four things, arise, rescue, slap and shatter. He's now making declarations. From a place of rest, after he has slept, like Jesus slept in the storm, and he woke up and he rebuked the storm. Here is the psalmist. He wakes up from his sleep, and he says, now arise, God. Now is the time. See, previously he didn't pray for that. Previously, when the enemy was saying, you will never be rescued, he just wanted to change the confession. He said, no, no, no. You are my shield, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. You're the one who holds my head high. With that revelation, he went to sleep. And when he woke up from sleep, he woke up as a warrior. Now he's saying, arise, rescue, slap, shatter. Come on, I want you to declare this after me. Arise, rescue, slap, shatter. Come on, look at your enemies now and make this declaration over those fears. I speak, arise God, arise and rescue God. I declare, slap my fears right now. And I declare, shatter the teeth, the poison, the weapons of my fear right now. Arise, O God, and let your enemies scatter. Rescue me, O Lord. Slap every voice of my enemies in its face. Lord, and shatter. Come on, somebody shout loud. Shatter. Shatter. Shatter, break it, loosen it right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, we are not praying this out of fear. We are praying this from a place of rest, from a place of peace. And the peace that is inside of us will now begin to manifest in our environment. The last verse, it says, for victory, it comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. 